Is your family tree a mystery? Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip, hip, hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In Cut-Off Genes. <laughs> Welcome to Cut-Off Genes, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon-Jackson, and I am a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a Gen Genie. And I am Richard Castle, the producer and co-host of this podcast. How are you doing today, Julie? I'm I'm really frazzled. Why are you but frazzled? I'm fine. Why are you frazzled? There's just a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I went out of town. I took myself out of town for a couple days. Oh. To relax. Where did you go? I, I went to Oxnard to be near the beach. Oh, that sounds good. Just so me nice. and my dog. Um but I, I worked the whole time and I got like more cases while I was there. So it didn't really do what it was supposed to do. <laughs> so why do you think that you're um so busy with cases now? People just have a lot COVID. of time on their hands, yeah? Yes, yes. There's, uh, you know, um, we've had a little bit of uh, publicity. My boss has had a little bit of publicity because of, cause our cases have, have doubled since COVID. Wow. Um, and I think it's that people have a lot of time to think about it. And, and I think they're realizing that life is short. And, and if you want to do something, now's the time to do it. Yeah. Well, I'd yeah. like to think maybe it's everyone listening to the podcast. Get me that girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> We're like the Schwab's drugstore of DNA. Right? Yes. <laughs> Julie Schwab. was sitting at the sitting at the uh, soda fountain, and, some, and she was <laughs> in a discovered sweater. in a sweater. <laughs> So it's it's off the charts busy right now. Wow. Well, I wanted I want to tell our listeners that um, last week I was walking down the street, walking the dog, <laughs> and it was like a busy busy thoroughfare, you know, main main business drag. And um, I got out of the way because I saw a couple walking toward me, and I just moved so the dog wouldn't be in their path. And I hear a voice, and then I realize, oh my God, it's Julie, <laughs> and I haven't seen you, Julie, I know. since March, right? In person. I spontaneously hugged you. I felt so. Oh, um, it was all right. It was so sweet. And um, <laughs> but you know everyone's wearing masks now, so you, it's not even like you can recognize somebody from a distance. Right. Well, you so. you think I would have recognized <laughs> Buddy though, because I look at every dog. Um, but my husband and I were obviously in a deep conversation. Um, no, you were on the phone, or, or I, I heard you say Beckett, which is your son's name, and it's not a common name. And I was so that's how him. I knew. Yes. 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 That's what it was. I was calling him. Uh, yes, I was yelling at him on the phone. I was calling to, to clean up his room or something. <laughs> but I realized. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized when I saw you, I'm like, oh, I miss Julie oh, and I miss people. <laughs> yes, yes. We, uh, uh, my husband and I went out to dinner last night um, on that same thoroughfare that you and I yes. bumped into each other on. Um, and we were sitting there basically at a table on the, on the sidewalk because we can only eat outside. Um, right. But we were just reminiscing about what it was like to be able to go out and be social. Oh, I know. I mean, even in the hotel. So I stayed in a hotel in Oxnard and Mm -hmm. um, and I brought my dog because when I leave the house, uh, my dog barks until I get back. Mm -hmm. And so that would have not have been fun for my husband or my son. Um, So I took him with me. So we just had a little a little vacation together. But it was so weird. We just like because nothing was open. And so you would order if you wanted to have food from the restaurant, you would have to order it takeout. And everybody yes. was walking around with masks on. And, you know, I love the sounds of the ocean. It's my favorite thing. It is beautiful. But I will say mm-hmm. <laughs> that when I was in Hawaii years ago and we had, were staying at like some condo right on the beach. Uh-huh. Um, and we ha- I thought, oh, it's going to be so nice to be able to sleep with the sound of the waves. I could not sleep at all because the waves were crashing oh, and like thunderous. Yes, it wasn't. Thunder. It wasn't wide enough. <laughs> It was not white noise, no. <laughs> so I'd be just starting to doze, and I'd hear crash on the sand. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm never going to sleep." Yeah, I can understand that. There's a yeah, there's a limitation to it, but this is it, I like a like a nice even rolling wave pattern. Yes, no, I agree. Like I can listen to the the uh, Calm app, and they have like little waves, and it's just kind of lapping waves, yeah. lapping, oh, yeah. lapping. But the moment I hear some bird going caw caw in the distance, I'm like, forget it. Now I'm not going to sleep at all. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, What's going on in DNA, Julie? I was looking at Facebook this morning, and um, and I was also writing letters to a couple of biological mothers. 
and actually a biological father and a biological mother. And when I do that, it's usually um, in concert with a letter from the adoptee. And I usually write a cover letter um, to uh, explain who I am and what I have to do with the whole thing and how I arrived at where I arrived. And I also yes. like to explain to them the reason for reaching out and to not be alarmed and, and explain a little bit about what it's like to be an adoptee and, and not know. And also the whole medical stuff is a big deal. Um, right. And then on Facebook, I, somebody in DNA Detectives wrote a timely post that I thought I would share. She said, today I had to fill out paperwork for a new doctor I will see. I've always had to leave the history blank uh, part blank where it asks about your father. Today, I caught myself passing it by like I have done for the past, past 45 years. Today, I didn't have to. I know my roots. I know who he is. Today was different. Um, and I remember that feeling, too. It's a completely mm. new... Uh, although, <laughs> it takes me much longer to fill out medical records now. Because <laughs> I used to be able to just write adopted, adopted. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a downside. Yes, there's, you have to actually write more. There's a lot more busy work yes, now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, but that's kind of a milestone for adoptees when all of a sudden you actually know. I mean, for me, it was a really big deal. I, I knew, I've known my mother for 25 years. Um, but now on my paternal side, I know, you know, depression runs deep in that family and there's, um, a history of suicide and, uh, all sorts of things that right. are important to know. Yeah. And I'm just really happy to be able to, to be able to fill out my uh, medical forms like anybody else. Do you write um, about the goat stealing in the... in the? Um... Yes, goat stealing history. Once again, that was not my dad's family. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love it so. I love it so that I just have to keep bringing it up. There are I'm thieves totally aware in every it. family. <laughs> <laughs> Especially mine, I would guess, since, you know, we're Australian and we're, we're a penal colony. Um... <laughs> There are worse things to steal than goats. Absolutely. <laughs> like loaves of bread. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jean Valjean. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Was that what? He stole a loaf of bread. Dang, he was just trying to feed his family. Um, that's right. That's the whole point of it. Like, that's what Hugo was trying to say. Right. You know? Hey, yeah. uh, should we talk about our little, our, our celebrity shout out we got? Oh, my God. Yes. So last episode, you named it. Um, Betty Buckley, come on down. Based on the based on the yes. story that we told about the the uh, Broadway show Carrie, yes. and lo and behold, who happened to tweet at us I get about a tweet it? For her saying thanks for the shout out, I almost oh lost my, my mind. It was so great, and I was like, "How did she? She surely she's not a listener." Um, so two schools of thought here: either Michael Casera, who was a listener. Um, uh, gave her a heads up and he is a, he's a, a Broadway guy. Um, or she has her name on Google alerts or something. <laughs> it just tells her whenever she's mentioned somewhere. But so I was, so I took the opportunity to say, be still my heart. I have to know now that I have you is, is any of that story true? And her response was the best. She just said word for word. <laughs> It made me so happy. I love that, like, it's almost all come full circle here, Julie, that this <laughs> podcast was started by somebody who I met through musical theater. Yes. And it's about DNA. Yep. And suddenly, and we talk about both of those subjects ad nauseum yes. on this podcast. Yes, we do. And suddenly we get a shout out from Betty Buckley, the doyen of musical theater. The doyen? There's yes. a word I don't know. Oh, I hope I said it right. What is it? Spell it. Do you know how to spell it? <laughs> I think it's D O Y E N N E. Is it like Dame? No. What does it mean? No. Well, I'm, now we're going to have to look it yeah. up because I'm not sure, but I I know I used I've it never correctly. Heard that term. <laughs> See, I just should have said the diva, but I didn't think I thought it might have a negative connotation, okay. and I didn't want to say. Let's it. talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Diva does not have a negative, should not have a negative connotation. I love Diva. I, do I love too. It. In fact, it's but in my email. I don't want to <laughs> um, I, uh, 
nowadays the the term diva is is used used in relation to somebody who is very demanding and expects special special treatment. Yes, um, like a housewife of Beverly Hills or something, yes, right? Yes, and like is kind of nasty, or, basically. But yes. it, traditionally, a diva is somebody who is just fierce. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, basically, yes. and you know, it's usually a leading lady, and um, and it's somebody who who knows her stuff, but is right. I certainly don't I don't conflate it to being a, a diva being acting like. A diva. If it if diva's in it, there should be something connected to it, like a spoiled diva or something. Or a, yes, yes, I agree. Okay. I, and I think we we have a new moniker for you. Oh no, Julie. what is it? Yeah, what is it? it you're the DNA diva. <gasps> the DNA diva. Isn't that great? How did we miss that? I don't know. We're gonna have to change the name of the podcast the whole thing. now. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just have to erase the last 200 episodes or whatever. It's like, now it's called the DNA Diva will, with Julie Dixon yes, Jackson. No, I, I own the term <laughs> cutoff jeans and it will be the title of my book. And, um, okay. I, and I guess I could call my book cutoff jeans, AKA DNA Diva. I don't know. AKA swirling maelstrom of feminine, feminine supremacy. supremacy. <laughs> yes. So, uh, should we take a break? Let's take a break. It's hard to top Betty Buckley. I mean, why should we try? If you're enjoying our podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. Or consider supporting us on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash cutoff jeans podcast. Now back to Julie and me. All right, we're back. I have a story to tell you. I want to hear a story. It's not story time yet. It's not story time. This is something that I found on the interwebs. Okay. So this is a, this is not somebody's real life epic odyssey that I got to talk okay. to. But I read about it and it's kind of like it. Um, so it's really interesting. So uh, in Randolph, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Matt, you say it, you're from there. Randolph, Massachusetts. Randolph was the next town over from where I grew up. Oh, really? Yes. Maybe, you know, do you know the DeLosa brothers? I do not. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so they were born to the same mother and adopted at birth uh, in the same family, David and Bobby DeLosa. They always wondered whether they had any biological siblings. They'd heard rumblings of maybe having a brother, but um, for decades they couldn't say for sure until they took a DNA test. Mm. And then they did some Facebook investigating that led David DeLosa to discover that he and his brother Bobby did in fact have a brother. Nine of them. Actually, oh plus my a God. sister. So the nine brothers plus a sister, three half brothers and three half sisters, adding up to a whopping total of 16 siblings. Whoa. Whoa. How nutty is that? Were they all from the same uh, mom? I think so. <gasps> Let's see if it says so as I go further into the story. You said half sisters or half siblings. I think it's their father. I was going to say, because I can't imagine a woman giving birth 16 times. I'm sure it happens and it has happened, but that's a very rare occurrence. There's a whole TV occurrence. show about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's, I think she's up to 19. Oh, come on. Um, really? Her uterus fell out. I mean, really? <laughs> so their father, his name was Francis Agnon, which is um, French Canadian. French, it's so. French for fertile. Acadian. <laughs> Touche. Uh, he had a long-standing affair with a woman named Carolyn Haley, and together they had 11 sons and one daughter from an affair. Carolyn Haley gave her first and third sons up for adoption at birth from Catholic Charities, um, and both babies, David and Bobby, were adopted by the DeLosa family. Meanwhile, Francis and his wife, Florence and Yon, had three sons and three daughters, Several of the Haley and Agnone siblings, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, um, overlap in age, now ranging from 50 to 64. Two Haley and two Agnone brothers have died over the years, leaving 14 surviving siblings who all still live in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Wow. Yeah. So wait, how, how many did he have through, through an affair? 11. He had more with the affair. Isn't that crazy? So he basically had two families. Wouldn't you think at some point the woman with whom he was having an affair and who fought, who mothered like 11 children would have said, you know, <laughs> maybe it's time we get married or may, may, or stop having yeah. babies if we're not going to be together. <laughs> yeah, what's the story there? I, 
I don't understand um, <laughs> I how people either. can have two families like secret and separate from each other because it's yeah. just how do you keep that going? You know that the lies and keeping things. It happens. It happens a lot. I found it a lot in my research to where I'm like, oh well, this is this has to be a mistake because he can't have had a child with this wife and, and then a child with this wife. Normally, the first wife dies or they divorce, and so all those children's children cut off, the birth dates cut off there, and then there are some people where the kids all intermix. Right. Wouldn't, uh, and so both it, wives are alive. Maybe it would have been easier back in the day before internet and all that, because, I mean, when someone, say, like a mm-hmm. husband was going to go off traveling for work, he would be yes. gone, he could be gone for months. Yes, right? it was much more common then. Yeah. Then you could and get it, away with more. And it was it a very expensive toll call to call someplace far right. away, right? Exactly. So I remember when I first moved from Boston to uh, Southern California, and I had a lot of friends back there. I remember calling the phone company to find out how much per minute it would cost to call my friends back in Massachusetts, and I would like because I, you know, I had to use my allowance to to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, when I uh, was randomly calling Australia looking for my biological mother, um, it cost a fortune. Oh, I bet. Luckily, I was on my parents' plan at the time. <laughs> <laughs> they were kind enough to foot that for me. That was very See? nice. See, that was very nice. They were so supportive. I'm just really amazed by that story. I can't imagine someone it, having eleven more. children. Well, oh, yeah. There's more, though. I want to hear more. So Bobby DeLosa said it's, there, it's been a hole in my life. Eventually, he sent his DNA into 23andMe and got matched up with a first cousin who put him in touch with his brother, Richie Haley, and half-sister, Kathy Agnon Nadu. They were so receptive, uh, David said, of his siblings. So this was David, not Bobby. Uh, we had an instant connection, and it was like we had known each other forever. Bill said he knew right away that DeLosa was his brother after seeing his photograph on Facebook. They set up a meeting with some of the siblings in March, and they've continued to grow closer ever since. Hmm. Um, DeLosa said it was mind-blowing to meet people who look like him. Absolutely it is. Uh, Francis died in 1996, and Florence died in 1999, leaving the siblings to answer as many of the questions as they can from a time when families were much more secretive and private. Hmm. Francis and Florence were the parents. Wow. The married parents. Joe Haley, Carolyn Haley's younger brother, said he wasn't even aware that his sister had given two sons up for adoption until recently. So I, that was my other question, was um, how many of those siblings were given up for adoption? Because you figure... At some, just the two. Just the two. Just the two were given up for adoption. The others stayed with their mothers. And part-time father. <laughs> <laughs> and part-time father. You know, I just I just uh, had a case the other day where I figured out who somebody's father was. Um, and he was from North Carolina. And uh, the client was born in, in Boston. Um, and the mother was married at the time. So this was from an affair uh, with somebody in the military. Figured out who the father was. Um, and the father had indeed been in the military, stationed in Boston, and his son that I contacted, the father's long deceased, but the son that I contacted um, was born six months after the client was born. Mm-hmm. So I had to reach out to him and break it to him that he has a brother, a half brother that he never knew about um, that is six months younger than him. And I was able to ask him, I'm like, was, did your father ever spend time in Boston? He's like, yeah, that's where he was in the military. Well, that helped, yeah. And I was like, well, <laughs> I mean, he had done DNA. He was the DNA match. Uh, but he didn't use his real name. But I had, I had found him separately mm-hmm. from the other DNA matches. And my guess was that it was him. So I sent him a letter. And then he called me and said, what makes you think that this guy is my half-brother? And I said, well, I did... Uh, did you take a DNA test? And he's like, yeah, I think so. And I'm like, and I could hear his wife in the background. And um, I said, is your username such and such this? And he said, I don't know. And then I heard his wife in the background say, yes, that's your username. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, and he hasn't logged on in forever. He doesn't even remember how to log on. Because right. um, I'd send him messages there. And I said, I, I suspected this was you. Um and so that confirms that this is indeed your half-brother. Wow. 
And and I said, so, you know, I I don't know what you want to do with this information. He would like medical stuff, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we're kind of... Uh, and I... I get it that it's a shock. They were very nice, but he was like, I, I, I just want to leave things the way they are. He did tell me what his father died of, um, so I had that to pass on. And they know who each other, where each other lives. Right. Um, so if eventually he does come around, he knows how to reach out. This is one of the reasons why I was concerned about when I took my DNA test that I thought maybe I might have a sibling somewhere because, you know, my dad was in the military as well before he was married to my mom. And again, who knows? Oh, my God. So, you know, I would say with um, unknown fathers, I would say 75 percent of the time it's military. Right. Well, I just made that number up. That's not true. But but it, it happens a lot. Well, I mean, of course, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they have the opportunity because they are traveling or they're stationed sure. somewhere far away and, and sure. from their regular families, they're, you know, and well, things happen. So things happen. Yes. War is hell. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, let's just finish this up. Okay. Um, on top of knowing whether he and Bobby had other biological siblings, David DeLosa said he always wondered where their lives would have been, whether their lives would have been better if they weren't put up for adoption. After hearing about the struggle, struggles his siblings went through, DeLosa said he feels fortunate that they were adopted. Hmm. Yes, that is common. Uh, the most sacred bond is that of child and mother, but they didn't have it easy. Mm-hmm. I just never thought I'd get answers. This brings up something interesting to me. Do tell. Um, I mm-hmm. know somebody who was adopted. And he knows his birth mother, very nice woman. But after mm-hmm. meeting her and getting to know her, he thought, yeah, I'm glad that I was adopted because he didn't yeah. think that he, he didn't have that feeling of I would have been better off if she had kept me. Yeah. And it's not anything right. against her. Like he has a good relationship with the birth, with his birth mother. But he just feels like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know how good of mother she would have been. And perhaps the decision she made was the mm-hmm. right one for me in the long run, you know, in, right. in retrospect. So Absolutely. I, that's how he feels. Yes. You know, we've talked about Ooh. it, especially because okay. he knows I do this podcast and we're talking about all of this. So, yeah, I mean, I and I, I, I've been open about this before. I'm in I'm in touch with my biological mother, um, but we've. And, and it's so important that I that I knew who she was and where I came from, and I'm so glad I was able to find her, and she was so accepting, and the family was right. so so accepting. Um, but I I don't have a, I don't have that bond anymore. I may have when I was first born, but that was right. kind of taken away from me, and you know it's just it's not really there. I I I, mm-hmm. I love her, um, but. Not like I loved my mom. Right. Someone who gives birth to you, of course, there's going to be a, a bond, a natural bond there. But th- there are other ways of bonding. You know, the family that you make, the, <laughs> the, the, the bonds that you create yeah. through yes. care and the years of th- th- that you go through together. That, I think, is stronger. Yeah, I, I think so, too. This sums it all up uh, as an adoptee. It's very confusing. We have very confused sure. feelings because... We don't, there are certain things that we're never going to experience just by virtue of, of how we came into the world. And uh, we, we have attachment issues and we don't know, some of us um, still have attachment issues. I mean, I have, uh, I keep everybody at arm's length and I've never felt um, a maternal thing with either of my mothers. And yet you are a very good mother and have a very close relationship with your own children. And I, and I think that has almost made it even harder because uh, I feel such a strong connection to my, to my kids. And I was, you know, almost psychotic with how connected I felt with them mm-hmm. uh, when I first had them, especially. Like I needed to, right, to be touching right. them at all times um, and comforting them and soothing them. So, uh, yeah. And maybe, I, I, well, sure. One, one may argue that that's an over, um, correction. 
No, and, and you don't know because it's sort of like the road not taken. You don't know that, like, had you not been adopted, that maybe you would have still felt the same way toward your own children when you had them. You know, like, just that, that feeling of, you don't. You just don't know. So all we have is what we know and right, the data right. that we have and our experiences. But um, it's just important to me to be able to uh, validate everybody's experience. Oh, yeah, of course. Somebody posted in the group about, um, the judge that's yes. being confirmed right now. Uh, when she was talking about her, she has six, seven, I think six seven, or seven children. Six? Yeah, yeah, and two of them are, um, are adopted from Haiti. And somebody was mentioning uh, the way she described them. It was different the way she described. I saw the that post. Kids. I thought that was so interesting, and I want to thank uh, whoever yeah. posted that. I, I I found that so fascinating. Why don't you explain about it, Julie? And it's funny because, okay, so she talked about uh, how, you know, she described each child and, you know, about like their, you know, what they're studying and what their strengths are and blah, blah, blah. And the adopted children were more, and she, it was not said with any less love, um, but it was just subconscious othering of them. Um, they had a more difficult beginnings and obviously have some learning difficulties. Um, and it was, and it was absolutely subconscious, as I said, but as adoptees, it's something that, that sticks out And and when I read that, honestly, I'll tell you, I'll be completely honest. So I have a brother with Down syndrome, as you know, a disabled brother. And so there are times when people say, you know, they ask me about my family. So yes, I have two brothers and I might even say, and one is disabled or one has Down syndrome. I don't often but I thought I did Mm -hmm. think after I read that post am I um am I othering him in some way by by setting him apart and just saying no I have two brothers so um so I want to thank that person who posted that for even making me consider that because I I love to um examine my own biases and my own internal you know and I think we all do it um and and it's not out of right not out of spite or or anything other than what we're used to, I think. Um, and it was interesting because uh, everybody had good things to say. And then one lady commented, I actually don't know if she responded, but she went on a whole thing about, I didn't see it that way at all and and all this stuff. Um, now, I happen to know this woman from, uh, we've had several conversations over the years. Um, and we, we tend to disagree on a lot of issues. <laughs> and I'm... My first thought was, I don't think you listen to the podcast. I think you are just here because you know me. And I also don't think she's adopted. And so I asked, I said, are you adopted? And Mm. she didn't respond. But I was very much prepared to say, you don't get to have an opinion about this. Well, I mean, I think maybe because the um, the d- judicial confirmation is so um, politicized. But what we're n- what we are talking about is not the confirmation. We're talking about specifically how someone refers to their children versus their adopted children and and othering them. So so we're, we're taking the po- politics out of this and just say it wasn't a just say it wasn't right. a judge. Say it was a lady you met on the street or this you know musician that talked about his disabled brother. Oh, it's done all the time. Yes, no, no, no. It's done. All the time. That was just an instance where it was at the forefront. I'm really glad that we talked about this. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, good. Okay, wonderful. Let's take a break. Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans with Julie Dixon Jackson and Richard Castle. You can support us by going to patreon.com forward slash cut off jeans podcast. Now back to the program. All right, we're back. Hello. Okay, first of all, the woman who commented on the Facebook group was Dawn Jump Blessy, not the woman who gave the response that I asked if she right. adopted. The one who posted in the first place. So thank you, Dawn. I think I pronounced your last name, Blessy, yeah. right? No, thank you, Dawn. I, it, it sparked an interesting uh, conversation both in the Facebook group and obviously here on the podcast. <laughs> and on the break, I was able to look up the word Doyen, and I used it correctly. Yay! Um, but I did not know what the definition exactly was. Do and tell. It is a woman who is the most respected or prominent person in a particular field, such as Betty Buckley is the Doyen of Broadway. There you go. And I am the Doyen of genetic genealogy. <laughs> No, I'm not. I still like no, the, I'm not. I still like that you're the DNA diva. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Trademark. 
All right. <laughs> Trademark. TM. Um, okay. Let's do part two of Cassandra Cooper's Epic Odyssey, shall we? Yes. So when we left off. So when we left off, um, I, I, uh, you guys who don't like cliffhangers were very mad at me. I apologize. But <laughs> it I keeps just, you listening. <laughs> come on. What, what am I going to do? So she uh, had been in touch with, so her father was adopted and she had found a sibling of her father and she had broken it to her that she was, that her father was conceived from incest. Let's listen to the rest of the story. Let's listen. Uh, did yeah. she say who, who the father was? Yes. So it ended up being her uncle. Okay. Her, so, so her father's brother. So her mother's brother, actually. Oh, okay. Her mother's brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Her yeah. mother's brother. Yeah, it's... So, yeah. Um, oh, yikes. Okay. So my paternal grand... Yeah, okay. yeah. So very close. It's even worse than a cousin. Obviously. Yeah, well, sure. Um, yeah. um, and, and this... I've talked to people that they've heard that he was with a cousin which obviously you lied um, and they find out that it was a niece and they're like, Oh my God. And you know, obviously that's very shocking. And yeah. Um, How long did so, it take you to process that? Oh gosh. Um, I found out last April, I want to say it took me like I, I sat, I had went to work right after having that conversation. Uh-huh. And so that was, that was hard to deal with. But it took me about a month to just really deal with it. And after that, you know, once in a while I'll think about it and I feel really gross and bad about myself sometimes, but mm. I know that it's not, it's not anything that I did. It's not my choices, of course, but, of course. you know, or, or your dad, um, frankly, I mean, right. Yeah. Right. It's just, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it happens. I mean, it does um, happen still. So, Yeah. I mean, genetically, out of my siblings, I, mean, I, I hit the jackpot on whatever genetics I had. Um, you got the good stuff. But yeah, I got the good stuff. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that obviously for health reasons was really good that I tried to, to dig so much and figure out. Um, right now, uh, uh, so they were. has that had an impact on, on how you research? Because now that should throw the numbers off. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, so it'll end up making people a closer match than, yeah. you know, they usually would be. So that's why that first cousin that I told you I found on Family Search DNA came up as a, it, it was most like an aunt niece relationship. Gotcha. Is what it was, what the, um, I think it was like, High six hundred centimorgan. Yeah, I would think it um, might even be higher than that. I mean, yeah, that that so seems like it could it almost be, just be an outlier. Yeah. Whereas, whereas with that having that evidence now, it's like, you know, I'm surprised it wasn't. Yeah, higher. yeah, yeah. I talked. To, I honestly, I didn't know who this person was, and I, I kept thinking somebody on my maternal side had an affair because <laughs> nobody knew who it was. Um, but they finally responded to me and told me they're like, they told, asked me the last names of my paternal side. And then they finally got back to me. I'm like, okay, yeah, but we are a match. It was a rumor that, um, your grandmother and, um, what would be her grandfather were together. Wow. Um, but she was told that it was a, a first cousin as well or a okay. cousin as well, but not a, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So huh. she, he, she ended up having, uh, four children with him. Whoa. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was a full on relationship. Yep. They, um, sh- one reason I had a lot of trouble finding her is that she changed her name to her mother's maiden name, which was his last name oh, because they legally couldn't get married. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Oh my God. So they, <laughs> so that was, so I, that's how I've gotten skilled is I, I you know, with female, you know, doing any yeah. female gene- genealogy, it's difficult, but now it, it, it's gotten a lot easier for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> he was, when she had your father, it was the uncle mm-hmm. who didn't believe yep. that, that he was his. Right. Right. Wow. And 
obviously she, um, even her children will, will attest to this. She was very, uh, promiscuous woman. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so I can see why he wouldn't have thought that. Um, mm-hmm. so my father was the first out of that relationship. Okay. So that was the last relationship she had in her life before she died. Okay. Um, so my father was the first, um, then, um, they gave him up, then she got pregnant again and they had, were pregnant with another boy and that was the stillborn. Okay. Um, and, and she, I've been told that she thought he was stillborn because God was punishing her for giving my father up. Yikes. Um, okay. And then she had two girls with him after that. And did she keep them? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, she, she wasn't a very, very nice person either. Mm-hmm. So either way, my father wouldn't have had a good, good life. Um, my aunt who is out of that relationship, she, um, she had obviously probably had an even more hard time dealing with that growing up than I would have. Sure. Um, but we've gotten really, really close and, um, she's in Kentucky. So I, if it weren't for this COVID stuff, happening right after I found out I would have gone and seen her already but um it's been really nice that um there are a couple of aunts um that have been welcoming and yeah um, that is great yeah so that that was some good closure so to speak yes Um, absolutely now is, is your father still living yes have you told him this news so we don't talk. Okay. <laughs> um, well, just say he's he's not a very good or safe person to okay. be around. Okay. Um, he has a bit of a criminal criminal record. Yikes. Okay. Um, so for my safety and my children's safety, Absolutely. we we don't get in contact. I've I've given many chances and tried to look it past, but we aren't. Um, but somehow he ended up finding out. Oh, he did. Um, Yes, that I found out. I, I'm not sure exactly how. Um, oh, I think there there is one of one of his siblings um, that is from the same relationship that he's a product of. She apparently is. Um, she got hooked on pain medication. So she's very unstable. So she found out about it, um, and because of all the other siblings have kind of exiled her because she has a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, she took that opportunity to reach out to my father and give um, everyone else a bad name. And um, my father was very upset that um, I would do such a nice thing and say bad things about him, which I wasn't saying bad things. I was reluctant to say anything. You're just telling the truth, them. basically. Yes, I was yeah. just telling the truth. And, and I, I told my newfound aunt. Um, if you want to have a relationship, I will gladly find a way to get you in contact. If you want to, that is up to you. I will not be offended. Right. Um, I know some of you have been looking for him for a long time. Right. So he did end up finding out. Um, and one of his adoptive brothers is a cop and ended up messaging me. And it, it let's just say he wasn't, He's one of those cops right now that he, you have to be worried about. Oh, um, no. Because he's not in it for the right reasons. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, so he he was very rude to me. Um, Wait a minute. Um, Did he contact you on behalf of his brother? Yeah. To, yeah. Just, to just give you a hard time? Yeah. Uh. Um, and I told him, I was like, look, you know, my father has done this and this and this. Um, this is why. And then he's like, well, you know, he has bad traits, but he works hard and he's not on any, uh, he doesn't depend on the government. And I told, so his adoptive father on his deathbed, apparently he made him promise that he would take care of my father because my father can't take care of himself. So I think he feels like he has to look out for him. Yeah, but at the same time, if you know somebody is not a good person and has done some pretty bad things, um, 
especially being a cop, you would think you would want to do the right thing and support um, the victims or survivors of those. Yes, instances. of course, of course. Also, I mean, there's this whole mindset with families that, uh, especially when it comes to adoptees, that people forget that the children of adopted children are also the children of these situations and are also yeah. this is your history as much as it is your father's and right. you have as yeah. much right to know the history as he does um mm-hmm. so it's it's so weird that they that they will exclude the importance of you knowing this information for the benefit mm-hmm. of the person that they're protecting um yeah so yeah that that rubs me the wrong way that sucks Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, it, it, it rubbed me the wrong way too as well. And I, you know, I, I blocked my doors more just because, you know, he had his a brother as a cop yeah. um, protecting him. So I don't know, you know, what he could put up his sleeve, you know, legally. Oh, that's terrifying. It's, so that, that went through my mind. Thankfully, none of it has, um, nothing has come of that. Um, Do you live in the same years, town so. as them? No, thank goodness. Same okay. state, um, but no, not not the same town. Um, last I heard, he had been living with that one sibling that had lived, reached out to him for a period of time or something like that. And they have a picture together that I've seen. Oh, really? So I know he has met one of them, yeah. Okay. So you started this whole ball rolling, and he wouldn't know any of yeah. this had it not been for you. Yeah. So he it should be thanking about, you. <laughs> he frankly. should. It took me about three years of, of consistent work. Like I would, you know, my, my mother would tell me, she's like, you're really obsessed with this. I'm like, well, if you didn't know half of who you were, yeah, you would want to figure out who it was too. It's not that I, I just want to know. And I know, I knew that I was just close enough to finding out. And I would get so frustrated when I would, you know, come up with nothing, but, I knew it so close and I was. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've gotten really skilled at finding out information, linking the, the DNA and, yeah. you know, the, the records on ancestry or what have you, whatever site you're sure. on. Sure. Yeah. I, and I so. find that it's more, the more that I do it, just the easier and more, um, instinctual it becomes. I don't, uh, do you notice that? It's just yes, I do. Now yeah. I know that I'm like, oh, well, if this is, well, then this is obviously going to be this, and I'm usually right. I mean, practice makes perfect, but it is definitely one of those things where things become more typical the more you do it, and it's easier to know which door to look through next or which window to look through next. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. I've I've had. Um, people reach out to me and ask me, are you considering being a professional genealogist? Because yeah. they'll ask me a question and I'll, and I'm like, Oh, just one second. And I'll look it up. And they're like, how did you find that out so fast? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like, right. that's, that's the beauty of it. It's like, by the time I figured it out, I was like, Oh, I can do this for anybody now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So have you done any other work for other people or other cases? Um, yeah, off and on. Um, I for friends, I have. Um, you know, it, it, I've learned the hard way that some people aren't as willing to learn the truth as oh yeah um, others are. So they'll ask you for help, and then you'll say, "Hey, I think this connects here," or so and so. You might have another sibling or something like that, and they're like, "Wait, that doesn't. Well, that doesn't match up. That's not true." You know? Yeah. Um, so, and I have all this proof, but they don't want to know. So Yeah, that's really um, common. It, it makes me feel like I've heard you say something like a professional stalker before. <laughs> it makes me feel like that sometimes because I'll do it for friends and stuff. And I just think, especially when you see photos of people that you're close to, of their, their great-grandparents or their great-great-grandparents, and know where they came from and, you know, how the, how this person you care about came to be, um, for instance, like I've, I've done my, my husband's as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's just really cool to put the pieces and see how you're the person you came to be. Okay. So, um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's quite a discovery 
that you've made there. Yeah. I, and I'm really glad that you told us about it, though, because um, it is something that happens. I've had cases like that where it's very clear that um, that that is in, that is what happened. Um, so yeah. I appreciate you disclosing that and telling listeners about that and also taking a little bit of the, um, the shame off of it. And it's just kind of where we are. Yeah. And that, that is the thing is I, I hesitated, um, when you contacted me first to tell, I was excited. And then I'm like, you know, do I really want, you know, everyone to know this story? Um, because there is shame to it. I do feel some shame. But at the same time, I want people to know it's not, it's not their fault. It's not anything. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. That you did. And, um, right. And it doesn't, it shouldn't you know. reflect on, on you either. It is, you know, it's yeah. a part of history and we can acknowledge it and learn from it and also prevail, you know, as, as right, right. obviously I can tell that you have recognized, uh, the toxicity in your life and removed yourself from it, which I commend you for. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's really important for even my children just to, to know, I think it's good for anybody to know where they come from so they can be. Yeah. I don't understand this this thing where people don't know, want to know where they are from and they, why they wouldn't want to grow from it. So they could be better people. Yeah. um, I don't either, you know, and break those cycle generations. um, Yes. But you know, Yes, absolutely. Um, That's where psychology comes into a play. <laughs> yes. Information and knowledge is power. Is That's how I feel anyway, yeah. and I think you do too. Yeah. So, hey, Cassandra, yeah. thank you so much for telling us the story. Uh, yeah. Really interesting. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll talk to you Bye. soon. All right. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Thank you, Cassandra. Good story. It's an important story, and uh, I admire her for owning it and uh speaking about it the more the more we talk about um things that happen to people and it happens to everybody uh i think the easier it is for us to accept each other it becomes like less taboo to talk about if we can get thank you get it out in the open right Right. exactly exactly so should we get out of here i think so um everybody thank you for listening i am richard castle and my, you can follow me on the twitter at castle songs or visit my website richardcastle.com i am julie dixon jackson you can listen uh no you can't i am julie dixon jackson you can find us on the twitter at cut off jeans pod you can find me at jules jackson uh, on Twitter, you can find us on Facebook, Cut Off Jeans Podcast, and send me an email, Jules Jackson at cutoffjeans.com. Also, the last Saturday of the month, remember if you're a Patreon, you can come to the patron only page um, and uh, join in on the one hour AMA. That Saturday would I be will the be 31st, having. Halloween. Oh, then it's not, then it's the one before the 24th. It's the 24th. Yes, okay. Saturday the 24th. Um, okay. It'll be a good time. <laughs> so come and join us. <laughs> All right, I have one more thing to tell you. What is that, Julie? The truth is in your genes.